Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Take it on the run, on the run, on the run. Hear them calling you. Welcome back to Frontline Rejects. Before we get started today, we'd appreciate it if you could help us out by hitting that like and subscribe button and by dropping a comment in the comment section below. And if you'd like to reach out to us directly, send us an email at frontlinerejects at gmail.com. The round we're testing today is Nosler's 130 grain E-tip. This is the fourth time we featured it here on the channel and we will be featuring it once more as part of our five cartridge review. Of course, this is a monolithic, all copper bullet. And today we've got it loaded up with a rather spicy loading in our 270 wind short mag. We're very excited to see how this bullet performs and we hope you are as well. So let's get started. To quickly reiterate, this is the fourth time we've ran the Nosler E-Tip here on the channel, and those of you who've been following this journey may notice a stark difference between the performance of these bullets and the last batch we ran through our 6mm arc. If you haven't seen our previous tests on the Nosler E-Tip, check out the description box and there will be links in there to our previous testing with this round. On to today's result though, taking a brief look at our overall performance, we have fantastic results at the closer ranges, which begins to taper off as the range increases and the velocity decreases. Increases. Estimated impact velocities were provided with JDM Ballistics software. On to the 100 mark here, we have about textbook expansion for a monolithic projectile. The bullet peeled back evenly on all sides, giving us a very clean result. At the 200, the pedals expanded to just below the relief groove in a very consistent pattern as we drop below 3,000 feet per second. At the 300, pedals stop even with the relief groove. However, we do retain the same consistent expansion pattern from the 200. 400 is where we can really start to see expansion ending higher up the bullet's shank. The projectile also looks a little bent, and we did lose some pedals from the backside of the bullet. This is likely due to the round coming into the target a bit low and skimming across the top of the lath strips on our water jug stand. We close out at the 500 yard mark with decent expansion at just a hair under 2400 feet per second. Moving on to our graphs, at the 1, 2, and 3, expansion is above 2 times original size, at the 4 and 5 above 1.8, giving us average expansion of 2 times original size, which is pretty darn good for a homogeneous bullet. Weight retention is extremely consistent in all ranges fired, with the exception being the 400 when the bullet contacted some wood and lost a few pedals. Average weight retention comes out to roughly 97.7%, which is in line with previous testing. 
Generally, we see around 97.5% with ETIPS. What this test really reinforces for me is the velocity-dependent nature of all copper rounds. We had these going well above 3,300 feet per second at the muzzle, and we had fantastic results. In our 6mm arc, we were only seeing around 2750-ish at the muzzle, and that resulted in poor performance, especially as we started to reach out. While that velocity requirement can be a limiting factor for some shooters, it comes with some substantial benefits as well. The limitation is that the end user needs to be running these bullets in chamberings which produce very high velocities or picking unusually light for caliber bullets to pump the velocity up in chamberings which produce mediocre speeds. For instance, we love running 130 grain Barnes TTSXs through our 308s and 30-06s because we can get velocity above 3200 feet per second. Now that's great and all, but another issue is then presented when manufacturers don't produce a wide variety of grain weights for each diameter of the respective round. For example, when we ran the E-tip in 6mm arc, we would have preferred an 80 grain pill, but Nosler only makes the 243 diameter E-tip in 90 grains. In 30 caliber, unfortunately, the only realistic options start out at 150 grains. There are no 130 grain offerings, although they do make a 110. It's designed specifically for the 300 AAC and may come apart a bit too easy if loaded up to its max potential in, say, 308. The upside to using a monolithic bullet like the E-tip is that it carries almost all of its weight when cutting a wound channel. Weight retention of over 97% is no joke, especially when compared to lead core bullets, which depending on their construction and whether they're bonded or not will retain anywhere from 50 to 80 percent. Whether or not monolithic rounds work well or not for an end user is really up to them. You have to have a good amount of velocity for them to work properly. If you don't give them that, then they won't give you good results. This is an annoying crutch, but with some tinkering and a bit of goofing, it's very possible to get these kinds of bullets working well for you. All this comes down to understanding the application you're using a bullet for, what kind of a effect you desire to cause and whether or not your selected bullet is capable of producing that effect. And then of course, at the end of the day, shot placement. So get out and practice. We've got one more test coming up with the Nosler E-tip. We'll be running 120 graders through our 6.5 Creedmoor. We've got some pretty exciting things in the works with Hornady's new CX bullet. The CX is very interesting because it seems to be an all-copper bullet which actually opens up decently at lower velocities. To catch those tests and more, make sure you're subscribed and that you've got notifications turned on. If you got something out of today's content, consider helping us out with a like and drop a comment below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.